Today we're going to talk about engine brakes, jake brakes, and turbo brakes. So first of all, here we deal a lot with turbo brakes. With a VGT turbo, it can close the veins, which gives a little bit of a braking effect. Now if you're in your truck like a 2015 6.7, it's built into the tuning. It may actually have a switch on there, but it doesn't just slap the veins closed. I actually show you the tables that it's very conservative when it closes the veins because it doesn't want to overspeed the turbo. If you add your own turbo brake where it's just a switch or you flip the veins all the way closed, it can actually be really dangerous for the turbo. We've monitored shaft speed and back pressure before. And you could have shaft speed spikes above what's allowed and exhaust back pressure that spikes above 100 to 150 pounds of back pressure, which is really hard on turbos and can cause early turbo failure, and I've even seen it blow up turbos. So if you have a truck with factory tuning that has an exhaust brake, it's fine. But if you're gonna add an exhaust brake by some sort of wire or 12 volt signal or some sort of device that slaps the veins all the way close, we have seen that shorten turbo life and blow up turbos. So make sure you're doing it right when you're doing it. Second type of braking system would be called an exhaust brake. Now both a turbo brake and exhaust brake work in a similar way. All it's doing is backing up the air after the exhaust valves or after the motor and kind of forcing it back in or creating a pressure right there so the engine has to fight it a little bit. Some of those exhaust brakes will be in your downpipe or after the turbo. Those typically aren't as harmful to the turbos as long as the exhaust brake operates fine without interfering with the turbo. An example is I have seen exhaust brakes that will rub the turbo. You got your turbine wheel spinning and the exhaust brake will open and rub the turbine wheel. Obviously you don't want to have that. It's hard on turbos. So we recommend you make sure you don't have any issues there or contact us if you have any questions. But either way, an exhaust brake a VGT brake, a turbo brake, they all work in a similar way. They spike pressure after the engine, so it creates a little bit more drag. There's another type of braking that we don't deal with much here, so I'm gonna get a resident expert to teach you about Jake brakes. It's a little bit of a drive across town, but let's head over there real quick and talk to Tim at Excalibur Diesel, because he deals with these all the time. Thanks, Charlie. Yeah, let's definitely talk about engine braking on heavy duty diesel engines. This is a Caterpillar model 3406. And in your heavy duty diesel engines, a jake brake is also referred to as an engine brake or compression brake or a variable compression brake. And some of the newer ones actually work in conjunction with your VGT on your turbo. They do use boost pressure to help work properly. And how it works basically is as your engine's coming up on a compression stroke, a valve inside a mechanism up on the top end here will open the exhaust valves on that cylinder and it will basically turn the engine into a gigantic air compressor causing force to help slow your engine down. So let's get under the valve covers here and take a look at how these systems operate. We're going to remove the valve cover assemblies to expose the jake brake housings and talk a little bit about how they work. Here's your jake brake assemblies. They work basically off of oil pressure as well as they have an electronic solenoid right here. So what happens when you turn your engine brake, jake brake, compression brake on, power goes to this solenoid right here and it allows oil to flow through this unit. And how it knows which cylinder to, to activate, it's not just random, it actually happens in a specific order. So what happens is when that solenoid opens up, you have engine oil pressure going through the housing here. There's what's called a slave valve inside the housing here, which comes down and as this, vet, this valve rocker comes up, it pushes the slave valve back up into the housing, causing oil pressure to go over to the proper cylinder, opening the exhaust valves, causing that noise you hear on a big semi. You get next door to them, they make that growling noise as you're going down the freeway or coming up to a stoplight or going down a hill. This is the unit right here that creates that negative power to slow you down, as well as the really cool noise that you hear. All right, so now you understand jake brake, exhaust brake, and a turbo brake or VGT brake. So another important thing to understand is your transmission. Your transmission needs to work alongside your braking system to slow you down. So for an example, if you flip on uh, an exhaust brake and you put the truck in neutral, it's not gonna do anything. Or if you're in a certain type of transmission that doesn't have a coast clutch or an overrun clutch engage, you also won't notice anything. 
One example of that is in the 7.3, when you hit the tow haul button, it will drop you out of overdrive and turn on the coast clutch, and you'll feel it holding you back. Now, having the coast clutch just simply on, no engine brake, no exhaust brake, that probably adds about 70 to 80 percent engine braking that's capable there. If you do it with the converter lock, adds another maybe 5 to 10 percent engine braking, and then adding a turbo brake on top of that maybe is another 5 percent. But the main thing that'll hold you back is simply the coast clutch or overrun clutch, and then just simply downshifting. Some trucks do it all by themselves, some you have to manually do it. But the turbo brake isn't gonna add 100% engine braking. It's not a huge difference. In fact, if you have one, I'm sure if you've pressed the button before, you kinda notice it holding you back a little bit, maybe not a ton. It's not a ton, but it does help. The main thing that's gonna hold you back is your transmission. In a stick shift, it's easy. You just downshift as you're going down the hill. In most modern diesels, if you hit the tow haul button or the overdrive off button, the transmission will do the rest for you. If you have the correct transmission strategies paired along with a VGT brake or an exhaust brake or even a Jake brake, it can provide a tremendous amount of braking so you don't have to ride your actual brakes down the hill. So a lockup switch. A lot of people ask if a lockup switch is going to aid in engine braking, and it depends on your transmission strategy. If your coast clutch or overrun clutch are on and you downshift but your converter is not locked, by locking your converter it can add maybe 5 or 10 percent more braking. But locking your converter without the overrun clutch or the coast clutch on, you won't get any engine braking. Yeah, your converter will be locked. As you let off the throttle, the RPMs will drop right down to neutral. So one of the biggest benefits of a Jake brake, an exhaust brake, or a turbo brake is simply when you're towing heavy, going down a hill, so you don't have to ride your brakes all the way down. You could save your brake pads, it could save some heat, and it actually be safer for the vehicle if you ride your brake pads all the way down the hill. They can get hot, not function properly. So it's pretty cool, it's something you can add to your truck. If you have any questions, make sure to reach out to us. We can point you in the right direction, tell you some of the do's and don'ts that we recommend if you have our turbos, or even if you don't have one of our turbos, we're happy to help.